47 million years ago, during a strange German forest, many creatures suddenly and silently met their end due to suffocating in a cloud of carbon dioxide. This area was at the centre of a lot of volcanic activity at this point in the Earth's history, which created a phenomenon known as an exploding lake. Carbon dioxide seeps into the lake, and then can be released suddenly, killing everything in its path. Only three exploding lakes exist today, all three in Africa, and can pose a serious threat. This occurrence was very unfortunate for the animals, but is very useful for examining the creatures that lived back then. Victims of the lake would include a type of now extinct bat, Gastornis, a flightless bird that could stand taller than a man, Darwinus, a primitive type of primate belonging to the same group as lemurs, and a very small bipedal mammal called Leptictidium. Most fascinating of all among these creatures laid a small dog-sized hoofed animal, a primitive horse. This little animal had four toes, weighed 10 kilos, and looked like a cross between a tapir and a horse. However, they would eventually go on to become one of the most successful herbivores alive today, and play an important part in the story of humans as well. Horses are perissodactyls, which make up one of the two living orders of hoofed animals, the other being artiodactyls. Today, artiodactyls are the dominant group of herbivorous animals on the planet, while perissodactyls only have three living representatives horses, rhinos, and tapirs. However, 20 to 30 million years ago, perissodactyls were the more dominant group and were far more diverse, with many strange creatures that have now gone extinct. The evolution of horses is a very well documented transition in the fossil record. However, due to both being very common and easily fossilized, in fact all perissodactyls have a pretty well documented past. Perissodactyls are thought to have originated from Asia, with an animal called Rodinskia being from a group of ungulates that were very perissodactyl like They were found in China dating back to 56 million years ago. However, despite this Asian origin, they first started to see a lot of success in North America and Europe even making it as far as India, despite it being an island at this point in history, and they may have island hopped their way there while the subcontinent was close to the Arabian Peninsula. By the early Eocene, most of the main groups of perissodactyls had diverged from one another, but they were barely distinguishable other than slight differences in their teeth. And even so, these creatures would eventually diverge into animals as disparate as tapirs, rhinos, and horses, and even other prehistoric animals, like Parasitherium, that was a distant relative of rhinos, and were the largest mammal that ever lived, growing up to 5 meters at the shoulder, being larger than any elephant. The strangest member of this group were called Calicathirs, that had a similar head to horses, and had very short hind legs and large claws, so probably walked on their knuckles like a gorilla. In addition to these, the earliest horses and tapirs looked a lot like the earliest brontotheres as well. There were animals that superficially looked like rhinos, although were actually more closely related to horses. Brontotheres were also some of the first perissodactyls to reach much larger sizes, and evolved this way very quickly, going from sheep-sized to over 2 meter tall rhino-sized animals in just over several million years. If you looked at the living members of the perissodactyl group, and the fossils of these extinct members, you would never think they would start out being so similar to one another. However, this is actually a law in evolution, so to speak. Animals will look more similar the closer they are to their common ancestor because they are more closely related. Perissodactyls just offer a beautiful example of this because their evolutionary history is so well documented. Similar examples of this process can be seen with dinosaurs and crocodiles, as in the early Triassic they looked very similar to crocodiles, and also early tetrapods, as all land animals used to look very similar to amphibians. These small primitive perissodactyls lived around much of the Earth in the early Eocene, but it was in North America that the story of horses begins. A small dog-sized creature called Eohippus, meaning dawn horse, was one of the first members of the horse family, known as Equidae. Like many mammals that lived during the Eocene, these small forest dwellers were forced to adapt to changing environments that occurred in the middle of the Cenozoic. The end of the Eocene and the beginning of the Oligocene saw a significant shift in climate from hot forests and jungles to the more modern grassland habitats that we are left with today, due to drier and cooler conditions. A genus of Equidae called Mesohippus first appeared in the late Eocene and thrived in the Oligocene, and it was much better adapted to this environment than Eohippus. They were larger, had longer legs compared to their body size, and also lost a toe, now only having three toes. These adaptations gave them much greater speed, helping them to dodge predation out on the plains where it would be difficult to hide. They also adapted better teeth for chewing more fibrous and tougher vegetation such as grass. This evolutionary trend continued with the evolution of Meohippus that was much larger than its predecessors and had more derived ankle joints in its teeth. Meohippus survived throughout the Oligocene that saw the climate getting drier and cooler with grasslands spreading further and further. In the Miocene, we see the first true horses or equine, like Parahippus or Maricopus, that had evolved to being the size of a small horse. 
However, they still walked on three toes, but had transitioned to walking on the very tips of their toes. Some equine readapted to the life in the forest. In the Miocene, such as Colobotypus that had a foot arrangement more suited for walking across soft forest floors. These more forest suited horses were actually the first true horses to leave North America and travel to Asia across the Bering Strait. Horses would eventually become monodactyls, standing on just one toe, and some of the first horses to evolve this feature were Dinohippus, first appearing in the late Miocene. Although it is not for certain, it seems that Dinohippus was a close relative to the genus that modern horses belong to, Equus, that evolved in the Pliocene around 4 million years ago. Equus were very successful and were the first grassland dwelling group of horses to leave North America. They travelled across the Bering Land Strait into Asia, Europe and Africa, but also into South America. The North American species also reached huge sizes like Equus giganteus, that was taller and heavier than a shire horse. At the end of the last ice age around 10,000 years ago, horses died out in North America and a little later in South America. The reasons for this are not clear, but it is a period in time when many large animals were dying out in North America. Horses would not return to the continent until the 15th century when they were brought over by the Spanish. Human domestication has changed horses significantly, making them taller, slimmer and able to run faster. Found in Mongolia, the Shavowski's horse is possibly a species of horse that was never domesticated, so offer an insight into what horses may have looked like during the Ice Age. A massive thank you goes to Karim and Fozzleworth and my other patrons for supporting me. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to patreon.com forward slash mothlightmedia and make a pledge. If you would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.